Greetings and welcome to the Open Minded Skeptic Podcast. My name is Sharon Ann Rowland and I'm your host. Today we'll be discussing the Trump baby balloon and the London protests. happened on July 13th this year on the London visit. A giant balloon dubbed Trump Baby was flown over Whitehall during the US President Donald Trump's visit to the UK. The London Muslim Mayor Sadiq Khan's Greater London Authority approved the request for the flight after thousands signed a petition and a crowdfunding campaign which raised more than £16,000 to get the 20-foot long inflatable off the ground. The inflatable was allowed to fly for two hours on the morning of Friday the 13th of July. Friday the 13th, there you go. As Trump met Theresa May at 10 Downing Street. Leo Murray, who was behind the crowdfunding idea, said, Trump really seems to hate it when people make fun of him. So when he visits the UK on Friday, we want to make sure he knows that all of Britain is looking down on him and laughing at him. That's why a group of us have chipped in and raised enough money to have a six metre high blimp made by a professional inflatables company to be flown in the skies over Parliament Square during Trump's visit. UKIP leader Nigel Farage, who I adore, he's great. If you haven't followed him yet on YouTube, go, you should go check out some of his speeches. He's quite nationalistic too. Tweeted that the plan was the biggest insult to a sitting US president ever. The backlash from Trump supporters has been fierce. Republicans overseas spokesman Drew Lickerman, oh, is that a, that's an interesting name, Lickerman, said the blimp was cringeworthy. Frankly, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing for the people flying it, for the British residents of London, and for people in the UK, he added. I don't think it will bother him. I think also the protesters have somewhat lost the plot. You have these massive protests against Trump, but never against these terrible dictators that quite often visit London. The balloon will be one of many protests planned for Trump's visits. Uh, Organised demonstrations will begin on Thursday evening with protests at Blenheim Palace in Oxfordshire and outside the US ambassador's residence in London's Regent Park, Regent's Park where some believe the Trumps will be staying. The Independent says, that's a newspaper, he is also expected to visit Scotland as part of the trip from where his family hails and to where Mr Trump owns golf resorts in Aberdeenshire and Ayrshire. Ayrshire? Protests are being held there too in anticipation. In Glasgow on Friday and Edinburgh on Saturday, where organisers are promising a carnival of resistance with anti-Trump fairground style games promised among the attractions. Do you think this was funny or disrespectful for a visiting head of state, especially the UK's supposed number one ally? I think, uh, you know, I, I don't think it would bother him all that much. And I don't, I think, you know, these people got the proper, you know, okay from the mayor of London and all this stuff. They, they, they went through the legal thing to do it. So I don't see, you know, what the problem is. And, you know, it, 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 there's always been, you know, comedians making fun of politicians, you know, uh, you know in America. And uh, I don't see a problem with it. Amanda Jean. Do you think it was funny or disrespectful for a visiting head of state um, to have this done? Well, this is a toughie because it does go in that realm of protest. So, you know, it's, you know, they're, they're stating their case that they don't like Trump. As for the Trump baby, though, I think it's sort of, yeah, I tend to agree with Bobby. I don't think it's going to worry, you know, Trump that much, if anything. What did it do? It created more media coverage for him. So here, you know, like, again, I I think at the end of the day, they're playing into the wrong hands. They're, they're, let's, you know, they're they're trying to get a a thing across. All it did was put Trump back into the media, which is what they were trying to, they're trying to do is get him out of the media. So um, I think it was sort of a waste of time, really. But um, do I think it was disrespectful? Yes, especially when, you know, there are other, you know, um, 
you know, there have been other visiting heads of state that are not um, very nice or, or are quite, you know, violent and things like that as it was. I mean, Trump is Trump is a businessman. He's an, he, he loves his entertainment. He loves being in entertainment. Um, but, I, I, you know, again, it's, it's all about... Um, you know, was it disrespectful? Yes, it was. Especially where, as they said, there's not there's not anything else said about anybody else, uh, probably because of fear and, and and anxiety around that. So, yeah, I I I, I didn't agree with it. Um, I, I I understand how people could see it as funny, um, and I don't think I agree with Bobby. I don't think he was sort of really worried about it. If anything, it put him back in the media again, but. Yeah, I, I I wouldn't have been one of those ones there hailing the the uh, balloon with them. That's for sure. Okay, Cassie, do you think this was funny or disrespectful for a visiting head? Well, of I, I personally I found it funny, and it I think I found it more funny because I knew it probably wouldn't insult Donald Trump himself. Um, if anything, I don't think it was a good tool for a protest because it gives um, Donald Trump more publicity and it showed his humility in this present situation. So it really created more conversation for him and it showed a better part of his character to the world. So I think in essence, it could be disrespectful, but just since it was Trump, I feel that I found it funny because I knew that he probably wouldn't take it the wrong way. Like he had a, a stronger back, you know what I mean, just to say, ha-ha, that's funny. Where yeah. I think if it was someone a bit more sensitive, it might have been like, oh, why are they doing that? But it's Trump. He even makes fun of himself at times. He knows how people feel. He knows the comedy, um, comedian and the comics that go around about him, but he's happy just to take that and not be sensitive about it and just understand people with that. So I think it was more good for him because it started people creating conversation around him again. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, Sheila, what do you think? Was it funny or disrespectful? Well, I'm going to go with um, Amanda and Bobby and Cassie because I think they've all got very valiant points. So, uh, well, I, I even I looked at it and I thought it was but the first time I saw it, I had a bit of a giggle and I thought, oh, my God, that's, you know. But then I started to, to one of the one of the comments I included in my intro there was um, somebody mentioned that they hadn't had any protests for some of the other dictators that have come to town in the last couple of months. So I went and did some research on who Theresa May had, had welcomed. And mm -hmm. uh, this is a, a question coming up. And um, there were some awful human rights, you know, dictators that came. And I was absolutely stunned that they weren't protested, but he is. So I actually thought, again, it's a, it's a level of delusion because he's, he's actually seen as worse than an Erdogan who's just, you know, you know, imprisoned and or kicked out all the journalists in his country. Do you know what I mean? It's there's, mm -hmm. it's like, He's not, they're not comparing apples with apples, you know, or maybe mm. he's just an orange, <laughs> literally. <Yeah. an> orange. <laughs> and they just don't know what to do with him. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I kind of laughed at first and then I thought it was disrespectful. So I kind of went, I'm, I'm, I'm the, I fancy it, I suppose, between the two of them. But, yeah, I think online if I had made a comment, it was I didn't think the number one ally of the UK should be treated that way. Was the Muslim London Mayor Sadiq Khan wrong to have approved this insult to a visiting head of state? But I think you, you may have already answered that one. Yeah, I, I don't know whether I think she's wrong or not, but she did approve it, so that's why I believe it was okay. Um, it, it might have been in bad taste for her to approve it. Um, so there you go. Okay. Amanda Jean, what do you think? Should the should Sadiq Khan have um, approved that? 
Well, I, I have a feeling that if it was approved, it was for, I mean, you know, um, one thing about Trump was he was very, very, um, you know, uh, strong. Well, he, he, he made quite, uh, you know, strong comments about immigration and, and things like that, especially through his um, uh, through his his campaigning and, and things like that. And so if anything, it almost seems like it, it does come across as, and I say comes across as, well, I'm going to stick it to you because you were trying to stop people from immigrating to your country. So therefore, yeah, let's approve this and, and have it, you know, um, uh, put out there that, you know, we didn't want you here, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, Cassie, what do you think? Was the Muslim London Mayor Sadiq Khan wrong to have approved this insult to a visiting head of state? All, all I can say, it's very unexpected. Um, but this whole ride is so unexpected. So sometimes I think because he is so famous and there is so much hype around him, sometimes I feel that maybe people like to play with that as well. So I don't know what was behind their motive for doing it. Um, like, obviously, there's a protest behind it. And the people, a lot of people did it because some type people probably thought it was just fun and funny, like me. But there probably were other serious people who were trying to compare him to this worst, horrible person. Um, so it's really hard to say, like, if with the motive and the whole play. And I think it is because Donald Trump has got this fame around him that he is kind of like a target for that kind of things. So obviously there are worse people out there than Donald Trump, but I think it's just that he has so much media, has so much popularity that it just seemed like such a hype and such a stunt for it to happen. And a lot of people were angry about it and a lot of people were <laughs> found it as a joke. Um, I guess she's probably considered it very well before she approved it. And obviously there's a push from the people to do this, but I don't think she would have just did it without considering the implications of her actions. Uh, Sadiq Khan is a man, by the way. Oh, sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. sorry. Um, and Sheila. Was the Muslim London Mayor Sadiq Khan wrong to have approved this insult to a visiting head of state? Um, from my perspective, I think it's disrespectful, but I'm also looking at why he would do that. And, you know, is he looking at his position as mayor and wanting to be voted back in again? So wanting to be on the, the side of, you know, um, appearing to be out there or whatever. Um, it, it's a bit of a catch-22, really, Sharon. Um, if it was Australia and, and it was happening here I, to someone visiting, I would personally find it disrespectful that as a nation, um, that's the image that you're presenting. doesn't look good. Should Prime Minister Theresa May have overruled the London Mayor? which he is able to do? Um, I, I don't think so. I mean, it's, uh, I, I mean, maybe she, she could have, but, uh, you know, I kind of feel like maybe she just felt like, you know, that's the mayor, why should I, you know, get in there and overrule, you know, the decision? And I don't know if it's appropriate to mention it right now or not, but I had read something about Trump um, doing some things that, were insults to the queen. Like, uh, I think he was walking alongside her instead of walking in back of her. And I think he, Trump... Yeah, he walked, went, out the, he walked out the front, but then he apologised when he realised and he stepped back. So he made a mistake. I wouldn't say he did it on purpose. Uh, oh, OK, because I was thinking, you know, he's, he's always, you know, knows what he's doing. And that little insult might have been nice, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, I, it really looked like he had made a mistake. You could actually see, and he actually came back and apologised and then let her go forward. So it's he obviously just forgot, it looked like. I think a lot of people think there's a lot more going on in certain situations like that for him, but I think he's just human sometimes. You know? 
um, Amanda, should the Prime Minister have overruled the London Mayor? Well, it creates that really grey area because, again, it's that, you know, if she if she steps in and changes the rule for one, she has to step in and change the rule for everything. Um, so, yes, I do think she should have because at the end of the day, she is, you know, she is the, um, the, the, the head of state for the UK. Um, I, you know, at the end of the day, you know, um, it's, you know, she is the one that is, is trying to forge uh, a solid relationship with, you know, with the current, you know, uh, sitting US president, uh, making sure that they've got a, a lovely, solid foundation in which they, they go forward on. Um, I, so, yes, it's a, it's, a, it's a difficult one because if she does, it means that she's got a, you know, she's got to overrule every time someone wants to protest a, a leader coming in. Um, but, I, you know, like it, it, it does sort of, you know, create that, that issue. But I do actually think she should have because, I, I, you know, again, it's, it's that thing of she's trying to forge a solid uh, foundation with the US, the current sitting US president. Um, him feeling disrespected, at the end of the day, they can always turn around and say, you know what, we're no, like, we can, we can cease our, our connection, we can cease our, our, our partnership in the way of allies if he felt that threatened. But in saying, yeah, it's, it's, it's a hard one because it is such a, you want freedom of speech and you want things like that, but, you know, um, no, uh, is, is, that, is that being that politically correct, uh, you know, to the nth degree, you know, it's... Um, yeah, no, look, I personally yeah. agree. I think let the mayor do whatever he wants, but I think... It's Theresa May that had to sit with him for two or three days in talks and at events and sit next to him mm. and, you know, have that, you know, that balloon thing constantly there. So, I, quite yeah. frankly, I think she should have overruled it. I think, and I think she should have ordered somebody to go out and shoot it down. <laughs> I know in the States, I think in the yeah. States, they're talking about taking it over to the States and I'm thinking it won't last as an hour over in the state, somebody will shoot oh. it. Right? So, what do you say, Bobby? Yeah. Will, will, will the um, will somebody with a gun <laughs> if they take it down to Texas? Definitely. If it goes to California, maybe not. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. Somebody might take it down, you know, with with a shot. Cool. Hey, Cassie. So, do you think the Prime Minister Theresa May should have overruled the London Mayor? I'm going to put myself in her shoes. I can understand why she would want to um, allow her people to have freedom of speech. But if I was in her shoes, I wouldn't want to try to shift um, the relationship. And I would, would probably encourage to strengthen that relationship with Trump. So I probably would have said, no, it needs to come down and probably just say, look, this is just Funny, like, you know, I can understand this is your way of freedom of speech, but we kind of need this country. We need um, Trump as an ally. So, you know, there's other ways to protest this. So I probably, yes, I, I agree. I probably would override it. So, Sheila, what do you think? Should Theresa May have said no? Yes, I think she should have, but I realise there's probably a reason why she didn't, and I'm liable to be slightly controversial here, Sharon, so I'll warn you no, about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, if we look at the fact, and, and um, I've been accused enough times of hate speech that I'm you know, probably going to upset somebody, and this is not actually hate speech, but if we look at the term Muslim in relation to the, uh, the mayor, there seems to be an incredible amount of backpedalling in the UK. And, and like you, I was born in the UK, where you can't say anything that may be seen as being um, offensive to someone who's of the Muslim faith or the Muslim um, heritage, if you like. And I think it's the same thing that you're getting here. 
let's soft pedal everything so that we're not upsetting anyone in this instance, especially the, the Muslim um, mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, because we do not want to be seen to be wielding a big stick. We're being, you know, nice, we're being um, whatever it might be. It, there just seems to be an awful lot of that at the moment. Oh, my yeah. It's not going to last much longer, um, especially in England. Um, it's a little scary what's going on over there, but they had that whole Rotherham, um, what do they call them, break gangs exposed. And because of that feeling like not wanting to be racist, they let um, rape gangs loose. Apparently 1,400 young girls have been raped over a 10-year period in that part of England mostly because the police didn't want to be seen as racist. They would yeah. they would never pull people up. So, I mean, I think that's just hitting the courts now. They, I think they're halfway through the court proceedings. And I think England's kind of waking up to the fact that, you know, sometimes it's, you, it's not, it's okay to actually state that somebody is of a certain religion or of a certain race or a certain sex, you know, and that's where, that's where the, the whole point of Trump is. He's kind of taken that political correctness, which has kind of, you know, frustrated so many people over so much time, and he's blown it away. And, mm. you know, and people now are actually having the discussions, real discussions on things. Um, and I think, I think the UK is getting there now because, and it's just a shame that 1,400 girls had to suffer. So, you know, I, I, I see stuff like that all the time. And... Um, I just shake my head because I think, how can people put, you know, a, a microaggression ahead of an actual physical assault? You know, mm. I just, I don't understand it. it. It gets me. Do you think the UK protests have damaged the relationship between the US and the UK? Who'd like to have a go at that? Um, I can do it quickly. Right. I don't. I don't think it damaged the relationship because I think Trump is a businessman. He's going to look at, you know, what what kind of deals he can make, and you know, I, I don't think he cares about that kind of stuff. Uh, what do you think, Amanda? Um, I don't think it has changed anything um, because, again, it, you know, Trump's going to appreciate that there's freedom of speech. They've got it in the states. They've got it in the U. Well, the UK is probably a little bit more uh, filtered at the moment due to their current, um, uh, you know, uh, citizens and and things like that. What they the, the changes that they're going through. So, do I think? No, I don't. I think what if it, it has done is probably, you know, um, created a lot more, uh, you know, um, actual truth between two countries. Because at the end of the day, if you don't like someone, say it. But, you know, it's um, but it's not going to change it, I think, anywhere. You know, it's not going to change the relationship between the US and, and the UK because they're, they're entities, not necessarily people. Well, that's all for our podcast. Thanks for listening. And remember... If you want to support what we do, then share, subscribe and leave a positive review over on iTunes for the open-minded skeptic. My team and I look forward to entertaining you once again in our next podcast. To check when our next podcast is, simply head over to www.tomspod.com. That's www.tomspod.com.